Lord. We thank God for allowing us to be here. Amen. If you're glad, amen, if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, just one more time. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know what the week holds. But right now, I'm in the house of the Lord. If you're glad to be here, why don't you just raise your hand right now? Amen. With that hand raised, come on, join with me. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. We thank you again, God, for keeping us, for protecting us, for watching over us, Lord. We thank you, God, for, for allowing us, God, to be in your house one more time. What a privilege it is, God. What a joy it is to be able to come into your house and worship you, God, in spirit and in truth, God. Let us never forget, God. Let us never forget, God, that we don't deserve to be here, but it is a blessing that you bestowed upon us to be able to joyfully come into your house with thanksgiving and with praise. God, we ask you tonight as we come together in unity, God, God, in one mind and one accord, God, that you would receive our praise, receive our worship, God. Let it be acceptable, God. Let it go up unto you, God, as a sweet-smelling Savior into your nostrils, God. And when you receive it, God, we pray, fill this place, God, with your glory as your word declares. Fill it, God, with the presence of your spirit. We ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, everyone that's come, God, who may be dealing with situations, God, whether they be natural circumstances, God, or sicknesses in their body, God, whatever may be going on right now, we declare you as God. We declare you as healer. We declare you as deliverer, God. We are here because we know that you are the only one true living God. We know it, God. We declare it, God. Our praise declares it, God. Our worship declares that there's no one else, no one else in heaven or in earth, God, that can do the things that you do, God. We ask you, Lord, to touch our minds and touch our hearts, God. Whatever may be troubling us, God, whatever may be trying to get in the way of our worship, God, whatever may be trying to take our minds off of you from focusing on you right now, in the name of Jesus, give us the victory over our minds and our hearts and our spirits, God. Let this place, God, be dedicated unto you, God. Let every individual in here, God, from the front to the back, from the oldest to the youngest, God, let every individual in here right now, God, let them purpose in their heart that we will lift you up, God, and we will glorify your name right now I ask if you would join with me I think we can before they begin to sing and worship I think we can lift up God in here right now in this place Jesus we lift you on high
know it.
Sing all to Jesus.
the names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names fade away. Let everyone come down. Let all. Hallelujah. The worship has stopped, but the Holy Ghost is moving. Would you raise your hands for a moment? Would you close your eyes? Would you seek God's purpose and will right now? Lord God, what is it? Whatever it is, I need to surrender. If it's fear, if it's doubt, God, if it's whatever you're asking, God, I want to lay at your feet right now. Hallelujah, God. I want to align with your purpose. I want to align with your will, God. I want to see your hand move in this day, in this hour. I want to be a part of the people. I want to be a part of the light in this dark world. Hallelujah. Before, before we move forward in service, would you just put everything aside, all distractions, all things you have planned for tomorrow right now, just seek God's purpose, God's will right now, Lord Jesus. We need you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, there are several sick that we know that would love to be in this place. There's many people that have no hope that would love to be in this place because we feel the joy of the Lord. We feel the peace of the Lord. We feel the strength that we get from our God. It would be a travesty for us to come and waste, waste a service where the Holy Ghost is moving and pulling and pushing and trying to draw his people nearer to him right now for the next few moments would you just focus on the lord hallelujah god what are you speaking to us what are you trying to tell us god where are you leading us where are you directing us lord god hallelujah mold us lord jesus oh open our ears to hear oh open our hearts to receive god 
We want to align with what you're wanting to do in this day, in this hour. Your coming is near. We want to be ready, but not just be ready. We want to prepare others, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Yes, God, hallelujah. Before the night is over, God is going to do something amazing in this place. And you can receive it or you can leave it, but it's going to happen. I just know that I want to get whatever God has for me tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And you may return to your seat this evening. What a privilege and an honor it is to be in God's house. And we want to welcome everybody. Actually, I had you sit down, but I'll let you do it while you're seating. We're not shaking hands or hugging today, but we do want you to turn around to two or three people and let them know how happy you are to see them. If you see somebody you don't like, let them know you're happy to see them too. And we also want to uh, welcome a few guests. Now, when I, when I call your name, we just want you to raise your hand. We want to know where you're seated because we do want to just acknowledge you and let you know that we're happy that you're here. If this is your first or second time at the Pentecostals and you did not fill out a guest card, we want to make sure uh, that you do fill one out because we have some gifts that you can redeem after service. So if this is your first or second time and you did not fill out a guest card, please raise your hand. The ushers are going to get that to you. I think we have everybody covered. I'm going to mention a few names, and when I do, if you would just raise your hand. We just want to know where you're seated today. I have a card for Cristo and Marcelo. Cristo, Marcelo, where are you guys sitting? We're so happy to have you today. We also want to welcome Robert Hibbs. Robert Hibbs. We're so happy that you're here, sir. God bless you. We also have some out-of-town special guests. They're special not just because they're here, but they're part of my family, and I love them so much. This is my Aunt Linda Baggett and um, Grandmother Iris Krosky. These are my wife's family members. We're so happy that they're here. So if you see my wife on her best behavior or my mother-in-law on her best behavior, it's because her mother is here. Um, we also want to, I saw a couple of special people walk in tonight. I thought I saw my brother, Chuck Perez. Are you here, Chuck? We're so happy. Where are you at? <laughs> you try to sneak in. I, I, I'm going to call you out every time I see you. I, I just love to see you, and I'm glad that you're here. And I want to mention one of the names since I got the microphone and I can get in trouble. My cousin, Lionel, and his wife are here. They're from Tarnaco de Vida. I'm so happy that they're here today. They've been coming to be part of the service, and we just enjoy them. I also want to give you an opportunity to be faithful in your tithes and offering today. Keep in mind there are several ways to give here at the Pentecostals. If you'd like to give by way of envelope, the ushers are going to be making their way through the congregation, and you can give by way of envelope. We also have giving kiosk in the back if you'd like to give that way. And on the church website, we have a giving tab where you can give there. So we have several ways. I do want to mention a few announcements today. If you are not getting the church messages or announcements that we send via text or email, please sign up for these in the foyer. There is a sheet out there, and we are adding everybody that puts their information down uh, to this list. And because of what's going on in the world, sometimes we have to change schedules and services and stuff, and we want to keep you in the know so we don't want you to show up to church and think we just shut down or something. We want to make sure that you know what's going on, so please sign up for those uh, in the foyer. We also have, as you see, I am... Uh, displaying here, no contact stickers. This means I love you, but I want to love you from a distance, which means if you see somebody with one of these on, please be respectful. Uh, they're just maybe trying to take care of themselves or whatever the case is. So if you see someone or if you like someone, we have some. Uh, the ushers can get you some. They're in the interest. Or if you see someone wearing them, please be respectful. That's what that means. It doesn't mean I'm antisocial. Sometimes it does, but some, it really just means, uh, you know, we're trying to keep my distance. And lastly, we are going to have a graveside service for our dear brother Colbert next Thursday, which is this Thursday, September the 3rd at 10 a.m. at the Woodlawn Cemetery. And all the church is welcome. Please be in prayer for this family, for this great loss. Tremendous man. I mentioned this to his grandson. I used to see brother Colbert on off nights in different rooms having Bible studies with people all the time. All the time. So we've lost a great saint, a great saint. And we want to honor this family. Please keep them in your prayers. And please keep all our brothers and sisters that are still either battling sickness or financial situations because of what's going on in the world. Please keep our brothers in prayers. Please stand with your, uh, to your feet tonight. We're going to pray for the offering. Amen. 
Let's go to prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for being so good to us. Thank you for blessing us abundantly, Lord. We can never repay you for all the things that you do in our lives. We ask that you multiply this offering, multiply it for your kingdom, and save a soul with it. Open doors of opportunity for those that are in need, God, and we know that you're in charge. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Bring your tithes and offering to the Lord.
me free. He, he gave me victory. He, he gave me a song. The angels cannot. He did. that are 
aren't in this room, but we can worship the Lord on their behalf. We can thank him in advance, God, for what you're doing beyond this room. Lord, you are the peace speaker. You are the healer. Hallelujah, God. We pray for our brothers and sisters all over the city, all over the world, God. We lift you up that you would draw men unto you. Hallelujah. Come on, saints of God. Let's give him glory in this place. Hallelujah. There's an invisible world. There's some darkness that we have to break through with our praise, with our worship. Hallelujah. We enthrone you, Jesus. We enthrone you, Lord, to do your work. We enthrone you, Lord, to dispatch angels. We enthrone you, Lord, to reign in our lives. God, have your way. Whatever you want to do, oh God, we are yielded to you. We're indebted to you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Come on, every hand lifted across this building right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. Lift your voice right now. Hallelujah. 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 Faith is high in this building right now. And what I want you to do is I want you to turn your hand to this camera right here. We're going to pray for every person watching. But I am tired of having service and not having my pastor at 100%. Amen. Amen. I am tired of watching the enemy mess with God's children. I am tired of watching God's people walk in this house beat down and we are going to pray a prayer right now and this prayer is to strengthen you in the house but I believe that we're going to get testimonies tonight and tomorrow about God's strength and his power and his healing flowing in the houses right now throw your hands toward this camera in the name of Jesus I come against every sickness every disease every spirit of weariness every spirit of depression every emotional roller coaster that your people are on in the name of Jesus move right now in their homes move right now oh God wherever they're watching from in the name of Jesus it's in your mind name that we ask it oh God there is nothing impossible for you in the name of Jesus touch and strengthen my pastor bring him back here oh God strengthen his body in the name of Jesus let it be done come on now somebody clap your hands and shout unto God with a voice of triumph in the book of Acts when the church was under persecution the church began to pray and things began to change I encourage you before you complain about it why don't we pray about it before we question God why don't we speak the word of faith and pray about it amen come on I know in this season it's really easy to be downtrodden and discouraged Come on, it's really easy to listen to the voice of the enemy. Come on, in the voice of what's going on in this world. Come on, but I've come to tell somebody tonight that if the church would do its job, if the church would begin to pray, come on, if you begin to speak the word of faith in your home, if you begin to speak the word of faith over your finances, if you begin to speak the word of faith over your health, my God is going to move. Hallelujah. You may return to your seats tonight. I'm going to get into the word of the Lord. You can stand for the reading of the word of the Lord tonight. We're going to be reading from the book of Psalms. Chapter 137, begin reading at verse number 1. Psalms 137, begin reading at verse number 1. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here tonight, to be asked to speak. I kind of feel like they said in the Bible, I am the least of these. We have so many great men who are on our ministry team who have carried the burden and the weight over the last four or five months, especially our pastor and our pastor's wife. Why don't we give all of our ministry team a hand tonight for the awesome job that they have done. Psalms 137, verse number 1 says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept. Turn to your neighbor and give him your cry face. Turn to your neighbor and give him your best cry face. We sat down and we wept. When we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst 
thereof. For they are they that carried us away captive, required of us a song. And they that wasted us, required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. The children of Israel responded and said, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I want to preach for the next few moments on how to sing in a strange land. How to sing in a strange land. Lay your Bibles to the side. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and ask Him to move in this service. Jesus, God, I ask that you anoint these lips of clay. I ask that you continue to move in this service. God, I come against every spirit, God, that would try and war against the success of this service. God, give us liberty tonight in this house. Set the captive free in the name of Jesus. Let somebody be healed in the name of Jesus, and we'll give you all the praise. Now, why don't we clap our hands tonight unto the Lord? Come on. How many of you have come here expecting God to do something great? Hallelujah. You may be seated. No doubt today we are living in strange times. I have never had my temperature checked so much as I have over the past few months. I have never even heard the term social distance. Until just a few months ago, ago, I have never in my life worn a mask. I think I did when my, my, my son or my daughter was born. They made me put a mask on to go in there. Um, but I've never in my life worn a mask as much as I have. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten out of the truck and gotten to the door somewhere only to remember that I do not have my mask on. And in order to avoid confrontation, amen, and be a good Christian, I go back to my truck and try and get my mask and go back in. I've never, in this strange time that we're living in, put hand sanitizer on so much. I'll be honest with you, I work uh, on heavy equipment. I work in construction, and I can't tell you how many meals that I've eaten with diesel on my hands and oil and grease, but it's like lately I'm spraying hand sanitizer every five seconds. I catch myself. And I almost have to ask myself, what are you doing? You're in the truck alone. What are, you, what are you sanitizing from, you know? A couple of weeks ago, I had hand sanitizer on. I wear contacts, and I just put it on, and I reached up to adjust my contact, and I drove home for about the next 30 minutes with one eye. But it's a strange time. Wouldn't you agree that we're, we're living in? People are burning cities to the ground in the name of peaceful protests. People are acting out and doing things that really should probably not be done, amen? People are losing their minds. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a store and I'm on the aisle and I get close to somebody and they look at me like I have two heads because I'm within their bubble, you know? I mean, it's just like it's crazy times, strange times that we are living in. And it's in this season that I have never witnessed so many downtrodden, apostolic, called and chosen people of God who have allowed the strange season that we are living in to determine their level of commit, commitment to the house of God and their level of commitment to God in general. Amen. It's in this season that I have never witnessed so many people down and discouraged. You see, I want to tell you tonight that if the devil has his way, a strange land will always turn in to slavery. A strange time will always turn in to bondage. You see, if the devil has his way, a short-term disadvantage will always turn into long-term disability. And you see, that's what happened to the children of Israel. They were supposed to be in the promised land. 
They were supposed to be in the land of milk and honey. They were supposed to be POWs, people of worship. But instead, they were turned into POWs, prisoners of war. How is it that things changed so quickly for the children of Israel? Let me just tell you tonight that if you are not a person of worship, it will only be a matter of time before you are turned into a prisoner of war or a prisoner of Satan. Come on, I've come to tell somebody tonight that God deserves your praise no matter what strange time and what strange season that we are living in. My God is still on the throne. My God is still worthy. My God is still holy. My God is still a healer. Hallelujah. But somewhere, the the children of Israel... They took a wrong turn. How many of you have ever taken a wrong turn? Amen. Rerouting, right? Reconfiguring. I'll be honest with you, I've about thrown the phone uh, out of the window more than one occasion with Google Maps. Amen. I'll be working. The other day I was coming from Huntsville, and it showed me going away that I'd never come back to get to Plantersville. And it took me down a road of a bridge that had been closed for two years. The problem was I'd followed the road for 30 minutes. And I was so mad and I had to turn around and and go back. But I think that we've all taken a wrong turn at times. And today, I really don't have a lot of time to deal with why you took that wrong turn or what you did to get yourself in that position, I'm more concerned tonight about getting you out of that position and getting you back on track. Amen? Come on, I didn't, come, I didn't come to heap condemnation on you, on what you did to get there, on what you were doing the last six months, but I've come to tell somebody tonight, if you will turn your life around, if you will turn things over to Jesus, come on, if you will live with heaven on your mind, you can turn things around and somehow the children of Israel ended up as captives to the Babylonian people they sat down beside the river and we find that when they sat down their strength became small their worship became weak Their geography and where they were living in captivity began to affect their genealogy. Their heritage and the rich things that God had promised almost became history. They hung their harps on the willows. They sat down. They stopped singing. And they started complaining. Let me just tell somebody tonight, you wonder why it's so important that you're on your feet when you come into the house of God. When I was a kid, I used to get my tail spanked when I came into God's house and tried to sit down, amen? I think that sometimes we ought to go back to that for some adults, amen? It might not be the worst thing. I don't know about you, but when I come into the house of God, when I think of all that he's done for me, when I think of his goodness and mercy, I can't sit down, I can't stop singing, I can't stop worshiping, I can't just sit there like a ward on a dill pickle and act like I have been done wrong by God. But that's what the children of Israel did. They sat down. And they started complaining. How many of y'all have ever had just a good old gripe sesh? Gripe session? Gripe session? Yes. Three of you. Thank you for being honest. Amen. The rest of you, how privileged you are. But that's what the children of Israel did. They just sat down and they were just talking about how good things used to be. And man, I sure wish that we could go back to 2019 where we could eat in a restaurant without a mask. And man, I I wish I could go back to 2019 
church was this and church was that. I sure wish that I could go here and do this. Nothing drives me crazier than somebody who complains. Amen? I've got an eight-year-old son, and when he talks about that's not fair, I, I always take advantage of the moment to school him on the fact that life is not fair. But I've come to tell somebody in the house because we're on the verge of letting this spirit slip into the church where we just want to go back. Let me just tell you, honey, it was great back then, but there's something greater on the horizon. Come on. And it's not going to be here in 2021. It can be in your family tomorrow if you'll start praying. It can be in this house tonight if you'll start worshiping. You don't need to wait for a new year. You don't need to wait for a new month. You just need a new realization of who God is. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord. And that's what the children of Israel did. They began to sit down and cry like a bunch of cry babies. Oh, it used to be this. It used to be that. And their captors came to them and they said mockingly, they said, hey, why don't you sing us one of them songs of Zion? Why don't you sing us a happy song? Why don't you sing us one of the Lord's songs? And they said, how can we sing? How can we sing in a strange land? How can I sing when I have COVID? How can I sing when I've lost my job? How can I sing when my house is in foreclosure? How? Can I sing when my children are backslidden? How in the world do you expect me to sing when all hell's breaking loose in my life? Come on, I've come to tell somebody tonight that it doesn't matter how dark it may be and it doesn't matter how bad the devil may have told you that you've got it. My God is good and my God is on your side and you've got more to rejoice about than you do to complain about. I wish somebody would stand to your feet and give God some praise. Come on, how can I praise in a strange land? you got to make up your mind that the God that you serve is worthy. Hallelujah. I've come to tell somebody tonight you can stay seated and be cursed in this strange land. You can stay seated and complain. And guess what? Keep speaking negativity and you're going to reap it, honey. But I've come to tell somebody else who doesn't want to deal with all that mess that you can praise your way through this strange land. Come on, you can rejoice your way. You can come through this dancing and you can come through this shouting. You can come through this, somebody, with God on your side. I've come to tell somebody tonight it's time to start talking about how good God is. The next time somebody comes to you and starts talking about how bad it is, you just tell them that Brother Gage said to shut up. Amen. That might be a bad word in your house. Amen. And I apologize if that offended you. But that's exactly how I feel when I have people coming into my office and ringing my telephone telling me how the devil's winning and how this has gone wrong and that's gone wrong. I rebuke that spirit. God is good and God is on the throne. Come on. God is going to provide all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Come on. You're on the winning side, honey. I come against that spirit from the enemy that says that the church is destined for failure. We are destined for revival. We're destined for blessing. God's hand is upon us. Hallelujah. I've come to tell somebody tonight your entire family would change if you would start speaking faith. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Mama. Stop talking about how bad it is. Stop talking about this and that. Stop talking about what CNN or Fox News said and start talking about the goodness and the greatness of God. Start talking about the blessings and the hand of God that's on your life. Stop talking about how bad it is financially and start talking about how many times that God has come through in the past. Hallelujah. My God. I said it's time to change the tune. It's time to change the narrative. It's time to change the song. 
because the children of Israel were sitting in that strange land. And they might have been listening to old Hank before his time, singing, I'm so lonesome, I could cry. I'm so down, I might as well just quit. Oh, Jerusalem, oh, I miss the way that it used to be. Come on, it's time to change the tune. Come on, it's time to stop singing. I'm so lonesome that I could cry and start singing about when I think about Jesus and all he's done for me. Come on, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I may be behind on my house note, but I'm going to heaven. I may be behind on my car note, but I'm going to heaven. Come on. I may be sick, but I'm not dead. I may be struggling, but I'm going through. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can imagine them sitting on the banks of that river singing, I Fall to Pieces by Patsy Cline even maybe. All the while forgetting that he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. Come on, everything's not falling to pieces. I know that everything around you may look crazy, and it may look like it's falling to pieces, but my God is holding you in his hands. Come on, and he's going to uphold you, and he's going to carry you through. Or maybe they were tired of being in quarantine like some of you. Probably never been around their spouse so much as they have in the last four or five months. Maybe they're sitting by the rivers of Babylon dealing with all kind of things. Wanting to sing that old song by Tammy Wynette that said D-I-V-O-R-C-E. And you hear me right here. Because I'm just going to tell you what I felt in the Holy Ghost. The enemy has attacked more marriages over the last four or five months. Come on in. We're coming to church and we're playing patty cake, acting like the devil ain't messing up our lives. I wish somebody would rise up in the Holy Ghost and say, you know what, devil? You ain't going to have my marriage. You ain't going to have my family. We may be struggling, but we're going to struggle through this together. We may be down, but we're going through this as a family. Or they may even be singing. i got a few more. Like some of us have thought, if we make it to December, like old brother Merle Haggard wrote. But I believe that we ought not to be, be thinking if we just make it to December, if we just get through this. I believe that we ought to have the mindset that we're going to see victory. We're going to see revival. We're going to see God do something great. Come on, I've come to tell somebody tonight, the devil has lied to you, honey. The devil has whispered in your ear and told you, we've just got to get through December. We've just got to get through this year. We've got to get through this season. Well, guess what, honey? We're going to get through it, but we don't have to get through it in loss, and we don't have to get through it in destruction. We can have revival. Turn the Netflix off and go teach a Bible study. Come on. The revival ain't coming in January, honey. It can be here next week. Turn off Amazon Prime and go reach your neighborhood. Come on, somebody needs to start singing and declaring by faith. I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this stronger. I'm coming out of this more anointed. I'm coming out of this more spiritual, more committed. Somebody say it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But I've made up my mind. I'm coming out of this season singing. I'm coming out rejoicing. I refuse to give up my worship I refuse to give up my family, my finances, my blessing, and my anointing in a strange time. You see, strange times should not make us estranged to God. If a strange season that we are living in has distanced you from God, let me tell you, that was not the will of God. 
And you're not going to be able to blame on judgment day the lack of church or the lack of this or the lack of that. Honey, you've had enough word in your life. You ought to be okay to make it through a Sunday on a Zoom church meeting or on an online service. Come on, somebody. Come on. It ain't the strange season. It's the strange fire that you're playing with in your houses. It's not the strange season. It's the strange fire that you listen to. It ain't the strange season. It's the strange fire on your television. And I've come to remind somebody tonight that strange times don't last forever. There is an expiration date to this. And it ain't when old Donald J. Trump or Mike Pence or Joe or anybody else come up with a vaccine. season. That ain't the expiration date to this. It's when God says it is. I've come to tell somebody tonight, you have faith and you have hope in this vaccine. You've placed your hope and your faith in the wrong place. My hope and my faith is in Jesus Christ. Come on. And he's going to carry us through. We're going to get through this. Come on, we're going to have revival. We're going to build another building. Come on, Brother Mayor, the Spanish sanctu- uh, congregation is going to fill this sanctuary. I believe it in faith. We're coming out stronger. But the devil wants to tell you that you can't find God in a strange place. I'm just going to tell you that I've grown closer to God in the worst seasons of my life. Let me just tell you this. When all hell breaks loose, you ought to say, thank you, Jesus. I think I'll take this as an opportunity to step into a new anointing. Come on. To step into a new season of ministry. To step a little further with you, Jesus. I think I'll use this strange time and this strange season to get a little closer to you, Lord. I've come to tell somebody tonight that it's all in how you look at it. It's all in who is whispering in your ear. Come on, hear the word of faith tonight. God's going to get you through. Hear the word of faith tonight. God's going to see us all through. God's going to bless us and God is going to walk with us. But the devil wants you to believe that you can't have a worshipful spirit in a pandemic. You can't, how, how, how do you come into church when everything's falling apart and worship? It's very easy. I'm just going to be honest with you. I block out everything that's going on in my business, in my life, all around me, on the news. I leave my phone sitting down and I don't touch it during worship service, so I'm not reading the headlines to depress me even further during worship service. And I come in here and I block it all out and I lift my hands. Come on. I saw Brother Marcus come in here just last week after losing his grandfather. How in the world do you worship and do you praise after all kind of stuff has gone wrong in your family? It's very simple. You come in here and you understand that life happens, but God is still worthy. Come on, things happen, but God is still worthy. Come on, things go wrong. I get in strange lands and strange times, but God is still worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We read in the end of that scripture, you can be seated. But the children of Israel began to remind themselves of what was going to happen to Babylon. They were in captivity. The prophet Isaiah prophesied that Babylon would be destroyed. They knew that Babylon's time was limited. There was a limit on that season that they were living in. They began to talk about how that when judgment was taken against Babylon, that their children's heads would be dashed against the rocks. That all kind of crazy things were going to happen to Babylon. The entire nation was going to be destroyed. I've come to tell somebody tonight in this house that when the devil starts messing with God's children, don't you ever for a second believe that he's going to get away with it. 
Don't you ever for a don't you ever for a moment begin to think that God has turned a blind eye to you in your captivity. You see, the thing was that Israel had done some really foolish things to get themselves into captivity. But God's eye was never once blind towards them. God's eye was on them from the moment they went in till the moment that he took them out. I've come to tell somebody tonight that when the enemy begins to mock you and say, Hey, sing us a song in this strange land. You remind yourself of the devil's future. You remind yourself what's going to happen in the end time. The church is going to go out triumphant no matter where we are today no matter where we were last month begin to remind yourself that my God is going to have the final say the devil may be whispering in your ear where's your song where's all that revival you've been talking about hey, where's your victory Where's your finances? Because you ain't got two buffalo nickels to rub together. Where are your children? Heard they were backslidden. Hadn't heard you speak in tongues in a while. Why don't you go ahead and speak in tongues for me real quick. Hey, child of God. Seem to be in a strange place. I will be very honest with you tonight. That I enjoy trash talking to the devil. I showed up at work last week and I got there about five something in the morning. And man, what a powerful service we had last Sunday night. But I got people out in my business. I got some of my top key people and I'm doing about the work of about three or four people. And I was standing there by myself. It was dark outside. And I kind of felt the voice of the enemy begin to whisper to me, how are you going to get through this week? I'm just going to be honest with you. And I, but without even thinking about it, I said, devil, you see everything that God has blessed us with? I said, hey, ignorant, take a look. I said, we started with one truck in a beat down old junky place. I said, and look what the Lord has done. I said, devil, let me remind you, you don't control my destiny. You don't control my blessing. You don't control my breakthrough. Some of you need to start reminding the devil tonight that is whispering in your ear, hey, devil, you don't control my breakthrough. Hey, devil, you don't control my finances. Hey, devil, you don't control my praise. Because you see, I like to get ghetto with the devil sometimes, Dr. Wilson. I'm just going to be honest with you. I got to get on to him. Some of you who are always saying that the devil's chasing you, it's all in how you approach your relationship with him. Because I like to trash talk him. I'm just going to be honest with you. When he starts bringing things up, I like to remind him of his future. When he starts talking about when I may have made a mistake or done this or done that, I like to remind him of what he did and how he was cast down. Some of you tonight need to stop listening to the voices of condemnation in this season. It's keeping you out of church. It's keeping you out of breakthrough. It's keeping you out of blessing. Why don't you remind the devil of what his future is? Come on and begin to walk in power. And authority. Come on. Come on. Some of you need to get real with the devil and just tell him really what you think of him and remind him whose side that you're on. In the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 18 through 19, Jesus speaking here, it says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And while that is so powerful that he's going to fall, he got dropped, kicked out of heaven. The Lord dropped an elbow on him and sent him packing. While that is powerful, I love the next verse where it says, Behold, I give unto you, everybody say me, 
power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Honey, if you were looking for a reason to shout, that ought to be it right there because no matter how the devil's been messing in your life, no matter how the devil's been jacking around with your finances and your children and your family, you have power and you have authority over the enemy. In the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse number 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out. I love this next part. It says, That old serpent, you know he's ugly. You know he's ugly as all get out. He's so old and ugly, he was cast out. And the Bible says in the book of Revelations, he was called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation, somebody, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night, and they overcame him. They over came him I've come to tell somebody tonight who feels like you cannot overcome who feels weary you may be watching by way of internet tonight and you may be low as a mole but I've come to tell you tonight that you can overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. Hallelujah. I've come to tell somebody tonight it's time to change the tune in the strange season that we're living in. Your testimony right now before you came here may sound like, you know what, I'm not going to make it. And you know what, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm encouraging you tonight when you leave here, you change your testimony to through it all. Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. Come on, somebody, I learned to trust in Jesus in this season. Come on, you may have come in here. And your testimony may be that I had Rona, but Jesus said, be gone. And now I'm healed. And now I'm back in church. Come on, I wish somebody would sing that to the enemy. Come on, because you may have stumbled back in here and you may be well in your body, but you may not be well in your spirit. But it's not the will of God tonight that you depart this place not well in your spirit, honey. God wants to renew and God wants to restore and God wants to take you out of that strange land. You may have come in here singing. I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. But I got a breakthrough. I may be going home so broke, I can't even eat off the dollar menu. But I got a breakthrough. Come on, somebody, I've come to tell you. You need to learn how to sing in this strange land because all you're singing is a sad old song. Some of you need to start singing a new verse. You need to change the tune. You need to change the song. And let me tell you, that's how you sing in a strange land. That's how you confuse the enemy. When you begin to speak faith in the face of adversity. You may be here tonight and you may be saying, I was sick and I was down. But Jesus healed me. But Jesus healed me. Come on. I was sick and I was discouraged, but I came to church on a Sunday night. I wasn't expecting a breakthrough. I wasn't expecting God to move. But that's my new song for this strange season is that I wasn't looking for it, but I came to the altar and somebody put their hand on my head and I started to speak in tongues and God began to move and God began to restore and God began to refresh. Hallelujah. See, some of you may have walked in here and you may be feeling like you're going to die in the strange land and the strange time that we are living in. 
But God has sent this preacher here tonight to tell you it's time to start singing the songs of Zion. It's time to change the tune. It's time to change the song. I can just tell you right now that I don't have time to get into it. I'm trying to wrap this up because I know you probably want to go eat or whatever. You want to eat, I want to have a breakthrough in the altar, okay? You work with me, you can go home before 8, amen? Hallelujah. But so many of you do not understand the power of music and the wrong voices that we allow sometimes to occupy our mind. I can tell you, if I listen to rock and roll, I want to fight. I've never listened to rock and roll and wanted to go love somebody, want to go pray for anybody, amen? I've never listened to rap music and drawn closer to God, amen? I, I tell the young people that I don't care who they are that labels it Christian music. If I can't speak in tongues to it, I don't care to listen to it, amen? I don't care whose church they're out of and I don't care who endorses them. If I can't have a breakthrough to it, I don't want to listen to it. I've just come to tell somebody tonight that you wonder why we're not having breakthrough in our homes and why we're not having breakthrough in our life. It's because we're listening to the wrong song. The children of Israel were listening to, it's never going to get better. It's all, going to, it's all downhill from here. God doesn't hear your prayers. God is nowhere to be found. You're being beaten. You're being mistreated. And God doesn't know where you are. I guarantee you, if they would have plugged in the right song and started singing, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. Come on. I guarantee you the mood would have changed in a moment. Come on. The mood and the, come on, and the atmosphere would have changed in a moment. I challenge a mother or a father to go home and put the right things in your family's ears. Put the right things in your children's ears. Turn off CNN. Turn off Fox News. Turn off all that garbage. And start to talk about and think about the goodness of God. Amen. Stand with me across the house tonight. You see, I believe that the Lord sent me here tonight to encourage somebody that you can sing in a strange land. Brother Mayor, Spanish can have revival in a strange time. Elevate student ministries, we can reach people and we can have revival in a weird time that we're living in. Pentecostals of Katy, you can have revival. We can have revival. We can fill the house in the season that we're living in. But let me just tell you, it's not, going to learn, it's not going to change until we learn how to sing in a strange land. Because I'm not waiting on January 1st or November the 4th to get my song back. Ah, come on, somebody. You better hear this preacher tonight. I'm not waiting until next month or next week to get my breakthrough. I'm not waiting until next year or the next quarter to let God do something in my life. But I've come up in this house tonight with a word from the Lord for somebody that your breakthrough is right around the corner. Your breakthrough is right here in this altar tonight. You can worry about socially distancing if you want. That's up to you, honey. But let me just tell you, I ain't ever let socially distancing stop me from having a breakthrough. Amen? Let's not get so caught up in protocols tonight that we miss out on what God really wants to do. Because it's not the will of God, somebody, you hear me tonight, for you to walk out of here with your head hanging low. It's not the will of God tonight for you to walk out of this place depressed and weary. In the name of Jesus, I come against that spirit. It is the will of God tonight for you to walk out of here with your head lifted high. I know what the Lord's going to do to the devil. I know how this all ends. I know I've read the back of the book and I know that we win. Somebody right now throw your hands in the air in the name of Jesus 
I come against every spirit of weariness. I come against every spirit of depression. I come against every sickness and every disease. I come against the war on the mind that the enemy is waging in the name of Jesus. Come on, I am more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody change your tune tonight. Come on, somebody learn how to sing in a strange land. Come on, somebody get victory in a strange season. Come on, somebody get a breakthrough in a strange season. Come on, it's time to pick up your harp. It's time to pick up that instrument of praise. It's time to get your song back. It's time, somebody, for you to get your praise back. Somebody, you hear me, it's time for you to get the Holy Ghost back in this house. Come on, begin to sing that in faith. I'm going to see a victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to see a victory, yeah, for the
never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Come on, somebody sing that. Let that be your anthem. Come on. I don't understand this season, but I see you working. I don't understand where I'm at, but I see you working. Come on, lift up your hands. Let it be a declaration of faith. Come on. You're moving. You're working. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands and voices right now? Just praise the Lord. Lift your voices in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We magnify you. You're worthy to be exalted. You're worthy to be praised. I glorify you, O oh Lord. I magnify you, Lord. I magnify you, Jesus. I glorify you, Jesus. I would hope that no one has thought this tonight, but just in case someone perhaps maybe listening is just somewhat passed this all off as though that this is some kind of positive mental motivational talk that's supposed to get us all pumped up and, and you know, you're dealing with reality. If that's kind of run through your mind, perhaps here tonight, I hope there's no one here that's thought that, but if that has, could I just say to you tonight that th this, isn't, this isn't some positive mental thinking, motivational talk or preaching tonight. This is not what this is about. This is as biblical as it can get, y'all. I so distinctly remember some 22 or so years ago of going through a tough season and getting the book of Psalms and every single morning, every single morning, somewhere around 6 o'clock in the morning, I would begin reading the book of Psalms. And I would make sure that before I got up from the altar, I was at the church, before I got up from the altar and started out for my day, I made sure that I was worshiping and praising God 
and that there was a joyful expression coming from my lips that God's got it. It's all in control. He's got it. He's got all in his control. And and I I was dealing with reality. And there are some days that I got in my truck and I start down the road and I didn't get 15 minutes down the road and the pressure would come back like a mighty wave. And I remember I could take you to a place in East Tennessee. I could take you to a place where I pulled off the side of the road and with tears running down my face, I lifted my hands and I began to glorify the Lord because I said, God, I can't get through the day unless I have got myself in the place where I'm realizing that you are in control. You are God. You're, you're mighty. You're bigger than my problem. You're bigger than the, the junk I'm going through right now. And there were some days when I started off in the morning at 6 o'clock, I was able to make it all day long. And there were other days where there were five, six times a day I would stop and I would, I'd be like, God, I, I can't live like this. I, you're, you're in control. Well, that is Bible. That's Bible. The psalmist did that. The psalmist, he, he got called up and moaning and groaning and, you know, about his situation, but then he had turned it right around. He said, but God, you're in control. I worship you. I magnify you. I glorify you. Amen. And so thank you. Thank you so very much, Brother Gage, for your ministry tonight. How many appreciate the word of the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I encourage you, if you're going through a struggle, and there's many of you right now that you're, you're going through it, and, and I, I encourage you in the midst of this, don't, don't let this just be a, a moment of, you know, a little bit of a breakthrough, and then go back tomorrow back to the same way that you've been living. But tomorrow, open up the Word of God. And I, I will be very practical. Go to the book of Psalms and start reading and make sure that you do not start your day until you have lifted up your voice and you've praised and magnified God. The scripture tells us that with prayer and thanksgiving, this is, this is what Paul writes in the Philippians, it's prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto the Lord and the peace of God that passeth understanding. It's going to begin to rule your mind and your heart. Some of you are saying, well, I've been praying, but I'm just not experiencing a breakthrough. But the problem is, is that you've been praying, but you haven't coupled it with thanksgiving. I'm going to say it again. You've been praying, but you haven't coupled it with thanksgiving. So your prayers has been, woe is me, rather than God, you are in control. I magnify you. I glorify you. You're worthy to be worshipped. You're worthy to be praised. So you've been praying about some situations. I'm speaking to somebody right now. You've been praying about some situations, and I'm saying keep on praying, but you just make sure that you couple that prayer with some thanksgiving. You lift up your voice and glorify the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God who rules over it all. Amen, and understand that he's got it. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you again, Brother Gage. Thank you for preaching the word of the Lord tonight. I want us right now, if we could, all across this house, just stand, and I want us to practice it right now. I want you to lift up your hands, and I want you to lift up your voice, and would you join in together with all the saints and all the believers and just praising and magnifying the King of kings, the Lord of lords. God, you've got it. We're in a strange time, but I praise you. We're in a strange season, but God, I lift up my voice. I sing unto you. I sing songs of adoration. I sing songs of praise. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are magnificent. You are mighty. I magnify you. I worship you. I exalt you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My goodness, there's so much I want to say right now, and I just need to stop. I love you all. Thank you for being here tonight. All those that are tuning in, God bless you. All of our church members that are still bound in sickness, we're with you. We haven't forgotten you. You're going to get through it. Everything is going to be all right. God's going to give you strength. Amen. We'll see you Wednesday night, and uh, you'll see more announcements on this.